everyone. I'm going to call this meeting to order of the City of Montpelier Development Review Board. My name is Daniel Richardson. I serve as chair for this meeting Monday, August 19th, 2019. We're beginning at 7 p.m. The uh, other members from my right are Kevin O'Connell, Michael Lazorchak, Meredith Crandall, staff, Kate McCarthy, Ryan Kane. Okay, the first item of business is approval of the agenda. Does anybody have any changes to the agenda? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda for this evening's meeting. Okay, motion by Kevin. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ryan. Uh, all those in favor of approving the agenda as printed, please raise your right hand. We have an agenda. There are no comments from the chair this evening. Um, and then we have the review of the July 22nd minutes. Myself, Kevin, Kate, Ryan, and Claire for in attendance have those who are eligible to vote had an opportunity to review the minutes yes and do they have any changes yes okay um, I'd like to note a spelling correction in the 29 Franklin Street application it's uh, Mary Ann is listed as two Mary Ann Pershuk is listed as two names Mary and Ann it's actually m-a-r-i-a-n-n-e one word okay and so if we have that corrected. Done. Thank you. Any other changes? With with that, do I have a motion to approve the July 22nd uh, minutes with the correction noted by Kate? Uh, Claire makes the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Kevin. All those in favor who are eligible to vote, please raise your right hand. Our minutes are approved. And that brings us to the first item of business, which is 11 Baldwin Street, uh, 11 Baldwin Ave, and that is the Vermont Natural Resources Council. I'll be recusing myself from this review. Okay. Thank you, Kate. Brian? I do have a pen. Okay. Uh, I think so. I do have some uh, materials to hand out and some revisions to the site plan. Great. Uh, why don't we just... Uh, do you want to hand those out now? It's up to you. Um, yeah, yeah that's perfectly sense. fine. Thank you. Thank you. If you state your name for the record, please. Oh, um, I'm Brian Shu. I'm the executive director of the Vermont Natural Resources Council. Okay, and Brian, you were put under oath last time. Do you understand that you're still under oath for the remainder of his testimony? Mm -hmm. Great. So when we talked last time, I think there were some decisions that needed to be made in regards to the parking, uh, and I'll just start there because I think that was one of that was really the main issue um, that we were considering last time. Do you have any updates? Uh, which I yes, um, at the, to the prior handle. meeting, I had submitted a site plan that showed parking spaces along the driveway that were in front of the building line, mm -hmm. which I didn't realize at the time um, uh, could not count towards parking uh, up towards the total. So the board asked me to look at alternatives to reconfigure the parking. Um, at that time, I had said that I had had. Um, identified at least one additional space that could be located adjacent to the driveway um, that would not uh, be before in front of the, the um, um, building line. I also said that I could explore parking off of Terrace Street. So what this plan does is it shows six spaces, including four um, uh, down in the current driveway area, um, one within, in, within, within an expanded driveway adjacent to the house, one in an expanded um, driveway behind the, the the garage portion of the building, um, one which 
uh, that open area next to the porch right in here, I would could be a designated handicap space if necessary, um, and then one in the garage. And then we also had initially provided a proposal for three spaces off of terrace. Um, we ran into, uh, we are then realized that the setback for the side yard was five feet, which pr that would have required pretty much maxing out our frontage on terrace. So we scaled that back to two parking spaces off of terrace. So that would be a total of six spaces. Five were required, is my understanding. Um, I, I did, and I apologize for handing this out at, at, at tonight's meeting, not getting it ahead of time. I've been on vacation and dealing with our engineer to get things done, so it, things did um, unfortunately come together at the last minute, so I appreciate your patience. While the, and I know you have some questions about the Terrace Street parking, um, I would like the board to consider, I would request that the board consider um, granting us an exemption for one space because of the cost of the Terra Street um, parking primarily, and I think there will be some discussion about stormwater and whatnot. Um, at the last meeting, I, I passed out some materials that documented that our building is located within a thousand feet of two transit store of two transit stops, and I also um, um, made a commitment that the building would provide interior. Uh, storage space for bicycles as well as um, indoor sh uh, shower facilities for people to bike to work, which we do have some of our staff do that on a regular basis. Um, we're also prepared to do a, uh, a demand management program to provide incentives for folks who live in the Chittenden County area to take the bus. So we, you know, parking is a real issue. We understand that. We understand on Terrace Street in particular, um, it's, parking is a, is a real problem during the legislative session. Mm -hmm. The rest of the year, it's actually fairly um, easy. Terra Street usually fills up, but the, the, the street immediately across Bailey that runs up to those stone arches that go to the Redstone property, um, there's almost always parking available there during the non-legislative session months. So, um, you know, we would be willing to, to make uh, other accommodations to have satellite parking at the Department of Labor building and take the shuttle in or walk. Um, but if you're uncomfortable with that, if you don't feel as though we, we meet the waiver standards, you know, we, we would go ahead with the Terra Street parking. When you say parking at the Department of Labor, is that, um, would that be in those public spaces? That are yeah, a lot of people park there and take the shuttle to the State House. Mm -hmm. It's pretty common. Okay. Members of the board had any, have any questions about this revised plan? one of the one of my um, uh, unfortunately kind of being at the last minute and not being able to talk to the the engineer what I'd prefer to do is have it be removable um, and be able just to sh shove it into the woods but uh, at this point I'm expecting that we would need to um, shovel it and um, a another reason that we'd prefer a, a waiver under the waiver provision Well, looking at your your design, is there a particular reason why you wouldn't have sort of that fifth spot in the, the sort of courtyard area, um, you know, behind the building and behind the the car space marked standard space? It, 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 yes, in the initial plan, I had two parallel parking spaces there, right. and I do I actually believe it can accommodate that. Um, I'm going to be really honest with you. There's there's the dimensional requirements required under the zoning. I understand those, um, and then there's human habits. And my right. bet is we will be parking more cars occasionally than um, a, as we do at our office at Nine Baldwin. Right. I, although I think we could configure uh, uh, that fifth space um, with my concern. And I talked to Meredith today was you can only be stack so many cars. Um, you're under under the regulations, they're only allowed to, to be able to tandem park two. You know, you, you can you can't have a row of three a tandem. Yeah, you can only obstruct one. Car. You can only obstruct one car with one right. car. So they could have a block of four, but you can't have three cars in a line. May I make a? I know this isn't what's on the application, but there is an allowance 
for the board to approve compact car spaces, and there's no definition of what a compact car size space must be. <laughs> so I don't, just throwing that out there. I, well, I, and this, because I, I was away until last night, um, initially, uh, you could parallel park a car up against the porch, mm. and that and the other car would, you would, both cars would not be blocking the garage. Mm. Right. Mm. Is there a handicap parking requirement? Yes, I think I said in the staff report that they need at least one ADA accessible spot. And I think we were discussed that that being the one up against the porch. And I know that there was a question about where would handicap access be, and it would be um, most likely uh, the wing of the building that juts out from the L of the porch, that's a sunroom, um, it would either be through a direct, there's a door that goes directly out, which is the best at grade. Um, we had thought about being in, in what would be the main door into the building. Um, it's not clear now uh, whether or not the interior um, door openings would allow for handicapped accessibility in there. It definitely would off of that sunroom. So, um, the, the desire would be to have it, this, the, the main entrance be off the porch, but it may need to be off the sunroom for ADA, um, in, in which case I'm not sure whether we would move the main entrance to that door as well. That's not my, my hope, but we still haven't done the interior uh, program, so I'm not sure if we can fit uh, handicapped accessibility once you get into the building, into the rest of the building, without doing some real structural changes. But if, it, yeah, assuming it was either of those, I think, was it your, you're saying that this parallel parking space would be the handicapped space? Y yes, the, the yes. Um, definitely whatever space is allowed up in that section is gonna be the handicapped section. Okay. And I, I, again, do believe that two spaces could parallel park up there. Mm -hmm. um, and not, not both be obstructing the cars in the garage. However, uh, this plan doesn't show that. And can I just make a point of clarification for my prior comment for Claire's question? So if the parking spaces will be striped, painted, then you have to have at least one accessible space for this particular project um, under the 2010 ADA standards. Um, so it's it's a little fuzzy as to whether or not one is required, but if they stripe, they have to have an ADA space. Mm -hmm. The, the um. building will definitely be meet full ADA yeah. um, requirements. And Meredith, just as a question of clarification. Mm -hmm. So going back to my earlier question about the stacking, if the permit didn't allow but human nature or habits led to three cars in that driveway. Um, short of us making a permit condition saying, I mean, we're, we're talking about what minimum they required. Right. It doesn't translate into you may not park there unless we make that an affirmative Co condition. Correct. Right? There's, no, there's, nothing, there's nothing for me to go around and do that. That would really be more of like a fire marshal issue in some ways mm -hmm. um but yeah but there's just, nothing there's nothing that says this this is about the number of like delineated parking spaces or the minimum number of spaces they have to have mm -hmm. um correct so yeah there's there's nothing in here that says that they can't have extra cars park in there right if they fit if they fit. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not as if we would, our permit would somehow become a restriction on that. No. Um, it's just what they meet for their minimum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, if, they, if, you know, everybody has minis, they're going to fit a whole bunch more vehicles in there than if everybody has pickup trucks. Because right. they're just going to be like, well, I can fit, you know, three or four in these two spots. Or those that bring their RVs to work. Yeah. <laughs> or their motorcycles. We, that's true. Um, I guess going back to the re re request for the waiver, I, my preference would be um, if you were to grant that, that you would still consider approving the Terra Street parking. Uh, I'm, I'm not giving mm -hmm. up on it, but 
the preliminary cost estimates caused me to look for an alternative. So you right. The waiver plus the yeah. and So, oh, go ahead. And with the modification from the existing plan, that would allow for uh, more expedited snow removal, or just as presented. Um, yeah, as presented, I, I think the rail would be the rail. It depends on whether it's it's it could be detached or not. And my bet is not because it wouldn't be providing the kind of safeguard that you want on a parking space looking over a retaining wall. So we we have um, we hand shovel uh, two of our spaces now um, on a regular basis. We actually bring somebody in to do that. So that that. that it's reasonable to think that we could do that there. there. It's not a lot of space. So oh, I think that that's an adequate way to go forward. Um, so to, I think we have to make a decision <clears throat> if we would grant effectively uh, a waiver showing that they've shown four spaces within and if we would be willing. So in uh, effectively, it would be an alternative. Um, that we would approve the two spaces up top, um, but in the alternative, if those aren't built, we would grant a waiver for one of the five spaces necessary um, on the representation that the space would be found at um, Department of Labor or another reasonably alternative uh, parking area. So, or, or, or biker transit, which are the other right. waiver provisions. Right. I mean, I mean, we're not actually saying you must park yeah. a car yeah. at the Department yeah. of Labor. Um, but that would be part of our, our finding as to whether, you know, that was, um, that was a reasonable. Because if this was on the other side of the State House, parking, so having somebody park at the Department of Labor might not be as reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, so with that in mind, I think there's a few more areas to cover um, with these changes. Um, first of all, this is, uh, so you have DeWolf Engineering who designed this, these upper parking spaces. Um, and they're calling for, it looks as if some, some change to the grade, as well as this retaining wall installed and this fencing system to stop people from driving over the edge of the the retaining wall. Um, what is the stormwater drainage plan? Um, it would it, it it the grade would likely um, drain back onto terrace. It's a it's a negligible amount. Most mm -hmm. of the driveways up there, certainly the uphill side, all drain onto to, to terrace. Um, there's a storm drain within 50 feet, and it, it would not uh, be an amount of excess storm water that would that would um, really ha have any impact on that. Our reluctance to uh, have it um, graded towards the downslope is we I don't want to then take all of Terrace Street storm water onto the property um, and create drainage problems on our property. We've actually had that happened at nine baldwin before when the street was redone and we lost our lip and all of a sudden our parking lot was eroding away and the city was really great about coming in and fixing that um but my concern about having storm having it run towards the downhill is we'll take a lot more than we're generating off of that little area and i think that what our space's contribution are to terra street is pretty negligible right well, and as well, the concern that it wouldn't shed to the side either on yes, your sorry. neighboring pro properties. Yeah. Uh, so the idea would be to make the grade of this, this these upper parking spaces such that it, it was above uh, Terrace Street yeah. and it would flow back into Terrace Street, any stormwater runoff it, it, to it, be handled by the, the city, yes. city drains, the stormwater drains. Um, just to just to make sure everybody knows what we're looking at on the t uh, August 19th site plan, um, if you look at the Terrace Street parking area, you can see the little notation of the 583 foot elevation and the 
that's the lower right corner when you're looking at it, but that matches up with one of the higher elevations on where that parking area connects to Terrace Street. So they've raised that corner so things will flow back. And I noticed that Tom McArdle had an opportunity to review this. Uh, not this one. Not this one? Yeah, because okay. yeah, we just all got this now. Okay. Oh, so yeah, that was the anything updated on the staff report since the last meeting is in green. Well, he mm -hmm. reviewed the one that actually had the three parking right. spaces. Right. Additional impervious surface on the area street. Yeah. Uh, Kurt was able to review that one. Tom was out until today. Kurt didn't raise any concerns no. related to stormwater from no. that. Even from the previous one. Exactly, yeah, great. Yeah, so this is even better. Um, okay. And then <clears throat> um, what would be the circulation plan for anyone parking on those upper two spots? They would have to back out on the terrace. No, uh, once they exited the car, uh, this, um, pedestrian circulation. Walk around the block. Okay, so they would walk. Yeah, up we, you know, uh, the architect we were working with talked about a, a stairway down. Mm -hmm. the, um, uh, I don't see managing that in the winter as being practical. Right. And since you have a sidewalk connecting this to the to the front of the building, people could just walk around the block. In a similar manner, I would note to the one of the the nearby properties that also has a sort of rear parking lot. I think up up Terrace Street. Yeah, there's there's one space and then two spaces, very similar configuration for, and I forget which Baldwin Ab Avenue property. It's, there's a sign up there. I think it says Seven Baldwin mm -hmm. um, are are up there as well. I will say that the grade isn't quite as steep. It doesn't drop as as far down those so they don't have to have as high a retaining wall as this calls for. Right. But it's also for pedestrian purposes, people... Comparable distance. Yeah, yeah right. And they essentially take the same sort of walking path. So. Yes. Um, I, I believe in... in Correct me if I'm wrong. Your standard for off-site parking is a thousand feet. Oh, but this technically isn't off-site. Oh, that's true. This is still on the okay, same parcel. Right. Yeah. So that wasn't the the next sort of item would be the fact that we're now approving two access points mm -hmm. for a lot that's not a corner lot. Um, right. So this is a similar but, issue to what we faced not not too long ago mm -hmm. with the idea of a second second access point and that requires a finding from us that it could support the second access point um, and I'll simply note that the two parking spaces are really would be an overflow parking situation and less of a driveway more of just simply a pull-in mm -hmm. as opposed to the existing driveway and notwithstanding the fact that um, this is not a corner lot. It is a lot that touches two public streets. Yeah. So it's not an unreasonable uh, use to have this, this double access. Um, certainly if the lots were divided, you'd have two access points if there were two separate lots. Mm. Any other questions or concerns about that? Uh, okay. So... I think that is, so the idea would be, uh, as far as the cars entering and exiting, let's start with the sort of upper two lots. They'd, they'd pull in and they'd back out. Mm -hmm. um, and they'd be relying on the sight lines that they would have up and down Terrace Street. Yeah, and, and, and there are, um, there are tr trees and branches within the right of way that, um, partially obstruct the view. They could be cleared off. They're not on this property. Um, in the sight line, if you see the elevations, it, it climbs up to 590, and that's the last elevation uh, at the um, intersection of Chapman Road. It continues to climb a little bit beyond that. I, I paced off about 130 feet uh, until it starts to drop down the other side. There's a crest up on Terrace. And 
the visibility down Terrace Street to Bailey's to all the way to the intersection. Mm -hmm. On 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 Baldwin Street, however, there will be uh, backing out as well. Right? Uh, true. Yeah, and that's uh, unobstructed to the Capitol. Right. Right. The other thing I'll say about that line of sight is um, on street parking is only allowed on the other side of Baldwin. That's, you know, we sometimes there's backing out of the nine Bailey space on Baldwin. That's the, the biggest obstruction, but that won't be the case with this property. Okay. And then uh, I just simply note for us as a board that. You know, this this pullout would not be conforming with the distance from intersections required under B71 because I think it's less than um, 150. I think it's 150 feet from an intersection, but it is a small neighborhood. Um, most of the driveways on this street don't are non-conforming. This is just simply a two-lot pull-in. Um, unless the board has any questions or wishes to discuss this further, we can move on. I'll simply note that that would be something we would have to decide to waive uh, in granting this. The Let's talk about the retaining wall. Um, <clears throat> and how would, just so I understand, how, how would the fencing I understand there's a retaining wall that's required to build up to the grade to, to bring especially the front end of it up from its its existing topple lines that look like 574 up to the 583. Um, but beyond that, what is the fencing going to look like in this in this parking area? Is it the the white uh, the white box and and how high and what is the driving need behind that? Uh, when you say white box, what are you? Sorry, there's a, it looks like a white outline on site plan C1.01, like a U shaped white outline around, uh, around the parking spaces. Yeah, it, there would be, um, this is an elevation of it, the other okay. item that, that yep. I picked on. So this, um, Basically, the retaining wall is is, is a uh, a, um, a precast um, uh, Lego um, uh, that fits together, and it's there's several options for it looking like naturalized mm -hmm. stone, um, and th there's several examples of it around town. Probably one example that's that's pretty big is at the new distillery, the Caledonian Spirits. Um, so there would be. So that same product would have uh, uh, precast posts on either end in the, the metal black uh, um, fence would actually slip into the, the, the precast post and be set there. Right. And that would be at the at the far end, the, the fence and the posts at the... Yes. Uh, um, and the side. Okay, and and would it be the same height all around? Yes. Okay, and and what would the purpose of? I mean, I can understand the fencing on the front, but is there's the same same kind of safety concerns on the side? Um, yeah, I guess I, I I'd look to see if there's any standard regarding that. Um, I believe our engineer felt as though because there's enough of a drop off that mm -hmm. it would be prudent to have it on three sides. It's okay. I mean, obviously, one of the concerns that we had is snow load yeah. um, and removal. Um, and uh, understanding that, obviously, we don't want anyone driving off into the uh, forward or to the side if there's enough of a, a difference in height. Um, at the same time, boxing this in into a cage. Um, you know, inhibits your your snow storage uh, capacity as well as um, you know, 
there are other ways to, to stop people from driving off, you know, bollards, mm -hmm. smaller, smaller pieces in which or fencing that, that might give you more flexibility. Um, I, I would be glad to explore that. Okay. Well, I just wonder if there was an overwhelm, you know, if the, the engineer had indicated, you know, this is something that's standard that we want, that this is your best option. I, I believe his understanding was that the city would expect it. Okay. Yeah, I think it might be more of a building inspector yeah, okay. issue versus zoning when it comes to the wall. Right. At least the safety aspect versus our height maximums. Right. I mean, the retaining wall is appears to be the testimony, at least as I understand, it, is the retaining wall is driven by the the topography. Yes. You know, you, the the wall has to be so high. You know, I think one of the concerns is that you have this nine foot high wall, and then you have this fence and <laughs> fence and post system on top of it that yep. makes it look a little bit like a turret. Um, and you know, I, I don't, I don't have a problem. We're not, you know, we're not uh, uh, castle judges, um, but at the same time, understanding that there is a certain uh, proclivity in the in the bylaws away from that type of of large fencing, um, just to understand if that's a building code issue, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I, I think I wonder if bollards. You could you could generally do four bollards, one in front of each space and one to the side of each, mm -hmm. which would be adequate. I, I would, if, if that's, you know, if, if that's engineerable, that would be my preference as well. Although I, I have to tell you, I feel better about that space once you called it a turret, because I thought <laughs> we do have, sometimes we're under siege. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. Um, <laughs> Okay, and I think we've talked about the ADA space. Um, okay, and then uh, the the bike storage. Have you explored where that? I think you were indicating at the last meeting that the bike storage was going to be somewhere inside. Yes, I've, yeah. Um, so the portion of the building off of the porch, um, really. Uh, much of the area between the garage and when you walk into the main part of the building is currently a kitchen, a laundry room, a pantry. It's, it's, it's I, I, I got a chance to walk through the house at the, the estate, estate sale. sale. Yeah. Okay. So that's all going to be recon reconfigured. And um, we, our um, office administrator is looking into options for, for racks and whatnot, but it would be right inside the entryway and there would be a place to the side where we would probably have you know, have space for multiple bikes. Okay. I, I, I mean, that, I, that would be great to be a permit condition that we do provide mm -hmm. off interior bike storage. Uh, I, it's not designed yet, right. but, but the fortunate thing is we're at the point that if we go forward with this, we're going to just, there's a lot of options. Well, I mean, that, that's one of the, uh, obviously that's one of the things we're going to rely upon when we, when yeah. we give you the, if we give you the waiver yeah. of the space. And so your representation is that right now the plans are for there to be internal uh, bike storage space in the kitchen sort of laundry area. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I mean, that, that, I don't think, well, I'll let the rest of the board speak, but at least one member has one member. I don't think it's necessarily a, a, something we have to put into a condition, but we understand that the representation is there will be, you know, uh, secured and sheltered bike storage space based on your representation that right now it's to be located in the kitchen, the existing kitchen laundry area. It would be a, a very reasonable finding. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, I think any representation made is becomes a permit condition. Uh, so I think by representing that there will have, right. provided that it's it's uh, relevant and a mess, it's a finding on which we're basing a, a conclusion, then if there's a representation that there will be internal bike storage, I think that's sufficient for me. And I believe you also testified last time that you'll have shower employee or shower facilities for employees. Yes. Um, great. So that's, uh, again, I don't think it needs to be a, a separate condition, but that's, I think, an important representation 
if we're going to grant a waiver down to four required parking spaces. Okay. So I think those are the major issues that were left on this particular application. Does anyone have any other questions? Is anyone here uh, to be heard on this particular application other than the applicant? Okay. So what's the pleasure of the board? And the two options are we can take this under advisement or we could hash it out here and now as to whether um, obviously there's going to need to be a written decision uh, because there are a couple of moving pieces here. But um, I'm happy to take the lead of the rest of the rest of the board if you feel comfortable making a motion um, or if you'd like to move this to deliberative session at the end. Well, the advantage to going to deliberative session is simply that we'll have uh, a little better opportunity to make sure we get all the technical details okay. in line. Uh, on the other hand, this seems pretty straightforward. Uh, so I could go either way with maybe a little bit of a yeah. Okay, and I guess I would lean a little bit towards a deliberate session as well, sharing some of those just as a matter of, of hashing that out, some of the details. How does the rest of the board feel, though? Sounds good. That's fine okay. with me. I'll take that as a motion from Kevin to uh, take this under, close the record, take this under advisement and, and decide it in deliberate session, and I'll take that as a second from Ryan to set motion. Uh, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Oh, yes. <laughs> Do you have a discussion? I did. Yes. Please. Um, the, uh, a clarification on whether the, the parking area was going to be paved or striped. I wasn't sure if any of these parking spaces, like the first one, was going to be striped or delineated anyway to indicate that that number one space as you first come in was going to be uh, a clearly defined parking space. I guess I was just kind of looking at... Uh, whether they'd be marked in regard to the ADA standard requirement? Um, it, it's going to be repaved. It, it definitely needs reconstruction, and there's some some, um, some, some issues that we need to deal with on a, on a catch basin. I hadn't thought about striping and had not planned on striping. Um, if yeah. the board felt as though that it should be striped, we would do that. Well, and I should note, we don't have, we don't require striping necessarily and you know as we discussed earlier striping does trigger other requirements such as the ada space um so just for these for zoning purposes unless you have i think it's more than 10 parking spaces there's no requirement that the spaces actually be striped mm -hmm. um you know i think you could if you decide that you're going to have an ada space if you just put you know Sorry. your label on the building to mark where they're supposed to be parked i think that would you can talk to okay. Department of Public Works. They have a better understanding of the ADA requirements than I do. So M my understanding is that when we get the building permit, that we may need to deal with the ADA parking space. Ah. Okay. Uh, any other questions, Claire, or any other board member? Okay, hearing none, do we all have a motion in mind to take this into delivery session and close the record? All mm -hmm. those in favor, please raise your right hand. All right, we'll take this into delivery session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Brian. You. Thank you, Brian. Okay, next item of business is uh, 29 College Street. The applicant is Keith Schumacher. If you will um, introduce yourselves for the record, please. Keith Schumacher from Montpelier. Don Marsh from Liberty Street, Montpelier, and Grenier Engineering. Okay. Uh, if you please raise your right hand, we'll put you under oath. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence and testimony you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? Yes. Yes. Great. So why don't you give us an overview of the proposed project? Well, the idea is that we would like to, uh, we would like. Well, you can just move it and point it towards you. We would like to create two two-bedroom apartments out of the existing property at 29 College Street. And we would like to add a driveway on the Kemp Street side. And the other thing we're asking for tonight is an entry door on the porch. 
Okay. So. Can I give just a quick little. Why don't you give an overview here? as well? Yeah. Meredith. So, really, the only reason this is here before the board, because this is a two, you know, going to be a two family home, so that doesn't require DRB approval usually. This is a corner parcel, so the second driveway wouldn't necessarily require the board approval. The main issue is that the second access point mm -hmm. is does not meet the minimum spacing requirements. And by second access point, by the minimum spacing, the street by, is. Oh, go ahead. Nope. Uh, <laughs> um, so it is. I'm trying to remember what the space is. Anyway, it's it's too close to other driveways. There's a driveway directly across the road. Mm -hmm. So that this is where the minimum act, the minimum spacing requirement is 30 feet, and it's 25 feet from the driveway. Yes, according to the applications. So yes, that's what we're talking about. Is yes, five feet. And okay. you know because that part has to come before the DRB, the whole application and the entire approval has to come yep. before mm -hmm. the DRB. Okay. And I'll. I'll note that this has already gone before the design review board Correct. Uh, committee as well yeah. for the, the various uh, seven criteria under that about preservation, harmony, compatibility. Yeah. But that was strictly for under their purview, right? Correct. That was right. That it would have gone before the design review committee, even if it didn't come here, mm -hmm. um, because of the addition of the second um, entry point into the house so that changed the exterior of the building and added a new door okay um, and then there were some other minor issues but they didn't you know they didn't really care about the driveway ryan did you have a question no i was just curious i was confused by the 25 feet from the existing drive so um for, for sorry. the new driveway to yes the, to the one three camp drive no, no no the three camp driveway is i'm just trying to double check my actual numbers here um spacing so in this district an access point is supposed to be 30 feet from any other driveway yep. it's actually approximately 25 feet from the one directly across the road okay that's so it's, it's 20 it's, it's it's five it's five feet too close to the closest other driveway the new Kemp Street driveway. But that 25 feet is the width of Kemp. Right. Okay. And and under the normal standards, Department of Public Works would much rather have two driveways directly across from each other than Kitty Corner to get that extra five feet. They, Even though zoning has a minimum distance requirement, Department of Public Works would rather have these two people being able to see each other directly across than trying to I merge understand. at a funky okay. angle. So, so moving this, moving this over five feet, or shifting how the entrance is, is not preferred by right. Department. Department of Public, Public Works is happy with this, okay. as long as they can get good sight lines by paring back landscaping. Okay. Um, and what particular pieces of landscaping? Um, so you can see on the August seventh site plan there is a note for underbrush to be cleared where there's a little outline yep. and it's in there you can see the GMP utility pole in it so they would be happy with this amount being pushed back and cut away um, I am not sure if but you can see that some of this is on the neighbor's property and it's not clear if that's all in the right-of-way or just on the neighbor's property so that was a an issue that um, the applicant needed to try and address well, why don't we start there? Uh, the, the applicant's more than happy to clear the brush uh, on his property. Yeah. And uh, within the right of way. However, the, uh, the vegetation to the east on the neighbor's property is uh, some of it's in the right of way, so DPW could remove it if they wished. But. Uh, much of it is uh, outside the right of way. Okay, and I, I was looking. Do we have a picture of, of what this brush looks like? I mean, are, are we talking about trees? Yeah. Or are we talking about shrubs? They're shrubs. They're they're two large maples that show up on the site plan, but the rest are very thin 
uh, shrubs. They came out as black and white photos to the beginning of the packet immediately after the application forms. Um, so the second photograph in there is actually somebody sort of right inside where this driveway would be. Right. It's a little hard to see on these copies. I don't see what? I don't have it either. Yeah. So oh. this is, this, I mean, we're just talking about shrubs and, yes. and brush. Are these like, are these volunteers or is this a planned landscaping or is this, you know, when I say volunteers, I mean, you know, it's the scrub that grows up naturally between boundaries because neither side maintains it as opposed to something that's cultivated and purposely, you know, a uh, privacy hedge of some kind. I would say it comes under the volunteer category. Okay. None of them look like they're planted. They're very, they're woody, veg woody shrubs. I mean, they're half inch, three quarter inch diameter. And so effectively we're, you have a sense about, obviously everything that's on your property could be cut down. And then I'm looking at Meredith. Is the X. Okay. And has there been any with the neighbors about drawing this back? Yes. I spoke with the neighbor and uh, expressed to her our, our uh, desire to have some of these shrubs cut, and she expressed to me her desire to not have them cut. <laughs> so, so it's a so situation said, without permission. She said no. Okay. <laughs> Um, go ahead. Um, yes. How much distance will there be between the proposed driveway on Kemp Street and that particular neighbor's driveway down the hill a bit? About 50 or 60 feet. 50 or 60 yeah, it's feet. It's on the other side, uh, a fair distance on the other side of the house, of their house. Okay. So I understand that it's more than 50. Okay. Um, I understand that DPW's recommendation is to trim the shrubs in order to maintain the sight line, but I'm not incredibly familiar with this site, but wonder how necessary. I mean, this would, is would it functionally be all right if those were not trimmed? I, I, I usually am very ready to defer to Public Works recommendations, but given the spacing, given the low volume of the street, I wonder how essential the shrub trimming on the neighbor's property really is. Can I just step in for a second? Mm -hmm. So just a reminder that before the applicant can actually build this driveway, mm -hmm. Department of Public Works has to issue a construction and access permit, and they'll be looking at those sight lines again. So this is not the end of that question, whether or not you approve it. OK. OK. That's, that's helpful, um, you know, because we are relying upon both photographs, maps that are somewhat incomplete as well as our incomplete understanding. And this really is a Department of Public Works issue where the sight lines are something where they can come out and measure and they're gonna have a better way of, of judging this. And presumably you can have a, a more technical conversation with them at that point as opposed to us. Well, one of the discussions actually we're considering as a condition of the DBW permit would be that the tenants be asked to back in so that mm -hmm. it diminishes the impact of, of that sight line. Mm -hmm. It doesn't end it, but it, at least you get, uh, you know, ways out before it, it uh, and that's not an unreasonable expectation. Well, it's not an unreasonable expectation, but I wonder if it's an enforceable one, which is how do we, how do we keep people backing in? I mean, that's a nice, Thing to ask but I was I was considering and I would absolutely endorse putting a, a clause in the um, in the um, the lease that would ask the tenants to back into their spots and to make it a potential um, default of the lease if they failed to do so on a regular basis yeah, you know yes we'd, we'd work work with that I, I just wanted to comment. I, I live around the corner, very familiar with this site, well, mm -hmm. past it very often, and, and there's often, uh, this side street is used as a parking area for people visiting the college, so oftentimes there will be cars parked along 
that side of the road, which I could see may cause difficulty for um, having to back into the site. You'll have a car parked. Oftentimes there'll be, there'll be cars parked along here and like basically all along here. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure if that would be well, how easy it would be able to Winter be. weather may make backing in extremely difficult as well. Question about public works. If they determine that the site dis distance is not adequate, can they enforce a trimming to make a to make it? I don't know if they can enforce a trimming on someone who is not the property it's not owner. In the right of way. Yeah, and it's not in the right, right of way. Of way. I, I don't think that they can necessarily do that. Um, when it's you know if it's not a public access point. Mm -hmm. If, if we're considering snow and we're considering on-street parking as limitations to ingress and egress from the new driveway, how much of an issue is the shrubbery if, if we have these other other things that are eight feet out right. from the side of the road? Right, right. Yeah. I, I think I there's would, more going on here. I, I think your, your question is, is, is the right one. Um, I don't think this is a uh, deal breaker, at least from my perspective. Well, and, and that's, I was really exploring how, how far we wanted to go down the idea of putting on a condition like that because, you know, one, we don't want to make more work for the zoning department, and two, if we do create work, it should be meaningful as opposed to Sisyphean. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Thank you. <laughs> you know, and, and one, that, one that's going to make a difference. So, um, okay. Well, any other questions about the particular shrubbery or site distance? No questions about shrubberies. <laughs> <laughs> We're back to that, are we? Yes. Um, just as given, I mean, I think that's our primary concern. Um, I go. The other concern, obviously, is that um, this driveway faces onto another driveway. Um, so while we've heard testimony that the Department of Public Works will favor that configuration, um, I, I'd like to understand from the applicant if they foresee any other difficulty, given that these, these two driveways would, would essentially face each other as far as any type of traffic or entrance and exit you know, stacking up. Uh, when approaching those driveways or if there's a like greater likelihood of any type of accident given that they'd be both feeding into the exact same point on the road I, the standard design practice would be have driveways opposite each other anyway okay I mean we're in an urban area we're in a low traffic street I I don't see an issue the only the, the interesting thing is the opposite side is actually a dual driveway so you have two different residences that would come across. I mean, that might complicate it because you'd have theoretically a little bit more traffic than you would. But I don't see it as a, um, you know, an issue in terms of safety. I'd actually, you know, the idea of backing into the driveway, I think it's actually not having that as a condition. It just occurred to me because the logical thing people would do is pull into that driveway across the street and then back across the road and use that, which if I own that driveway, I don't think I'd be particularly happy about people pulling into my driveway to back across the street. Um, I mean, that would be the sole concern. And apart, what you're saying essentially is that there really isn't any particular design flaw or feature in that, Don, um, that this is a common practice where driveways will be opposite each other on low, low volume roads in dense urban areas like this. And it's it's consistent throughout the city, right? I don't know where it is, but I believe the last meeting I saw one part regulation that suggested that. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, it says it right here in uh, Figure Three Dash One Two, directly opposite driveway is preferred. And so, really, this is the, so. If we go back to the idea of separation distance, it's it's really the fact that. This is a small road that's separating this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But 
you know, given that, and is it is it simply because this 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 road is unusually narrow, or you know, when we were talking about, is it? And Rob, I always get this wrong. Is it the normal standard width of a road is two rod? Three rod. Three rod. Three, three rod. Forty-nine and a half feet. So Forty-nine and a half. Yeah. Historic road in an older neighborhood. It's very okay. much like others. Well, it works yeah. pretty good angle and all that. Every street's got it. Every. <laughs> well, I just I I I only ask that because you know if if I, I'm getting at given that these this is probably the first time we've really sort of full on had this particular issue with these particular bylaws, given that they. They say outright we prefer driveways directly opposite each other. You know, does it make sense then that the distance between driveway the 30 feet? They're really talking I, I about think, on the same side of the street. I think well, the interpretation of the spacing is supposed to be horizontal beside each other. On our logical issues of not having, you know, having space, but I think to construe it as opposite is a. A mis oh, it, it's interpretation. Yeah, I mean, it specifically says in the regulations that they mean on both sides of the street for those distances. I think it's more of a, uh, they're not necessarily being engineers <laughs> or, right. or people who, who design streets getting people involved understand. when they, in, in understanding the design of streets, being involved when they set these particular district specific standards. Um, you know, and they were picking a lot of those numbers by doing surveys of districts and trying to just find a basic average number for current spacing on a lot of these. Um, and it just doesn't capture everything and, okay. and make a lot of sense sometimes. Well, and you know, this is just to understand given this, is this a meaningful distinction? If, if we're going to say, okay, this is fine, it can be less than 30 feet, are we waiving something meaningful that might have collateral consequences um, as opposed to what I'm, I'm hearing in a mixture of both Meredith, your understanding of the promulgation of the bylaws as well as Don, your testimony in regards to the safety features that this is not a situation where we're likely to be facing some unexpected, you know, uh, issue. All right. Um, any other questions on the driveway itself, board? Given that we do have to take a look at um, the remainder of the application because it has come under our purview, um, I'll just simply note that the design review board or committee has has approved the aesthetic changes. The only two other changes apart from the driveway are the the entrance porch and stair, which is going to be located at the rear corner of the building. The stair in the rear corner, I yeah. think, was already there, isn't it? it? That that's there. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, that that's that's. I just look. Okay. I, yeah, that's oh, that's there. existing. Sorry. Yep, it's just that. Just this entrance. And then some lights. Okay. So that's that's it, apart from the driveway. We we had considered it as an alternative, Mr. Joyce's original plan to add stairs in the back okay. uh, between um, 29 and 31 right. uh, um, college and had hoped that we would be allowed to have that as an alternative. Um, well, that's what I'm looking at. This is the new rear stair, which talks about the rendering of the new steel stairways. Yes, that's yes. the one. I mean, that's what you're proposing to add? We, we would like, I, I, how would you express that, Don? The idea that we would like to have a second it is, an alternative. An, yeah, an option. An option. And if, yeah. if I'm reading the diagram correctly, you, you've illustrated a rendering of a new steel stairway that's going up to 31 College, a Crowley building, and you're saying that you would use a similar steel stairway design mm -hmm. to get up no. to the second no. story portion. No, no, no this is safe. two, this is just two 29 College. It's There's a shared patio. But what I'm saying, oh, so, that's, oh, the stairway the, would be up to the shared patio yeah. on Crawley. Okay, that yeah. was a little hard to, I get right, it now. Right, right, and, that, and the, this is the property line. Yeah, and it goes up like this. Yeah, that's right. And it would raise to the oh. Oh, so you will share right. the concrete oh, walkway. Right, okay. The, the concrete right walkway is on this property. So there would be a yeah. Yep. So it would come up on this property. Yep, I see now. Yeah, and this is, um, just to clarify, when we had discussed this, 
um, when the subdivision was approved, the board approved the subdivision of 29 and 31 College Street with a privacy fence being built here. And then my understanding is that as part of the purchase and sale agreement, you asked them not to put that privacy fence up here. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. So is that is that a condition of the subdivision? It was. It was no. It was just one of the things that they said they were. It's. It was an option. It was an option. It was something that could be waived by the buyer. Okay. Which he did. Which yeah. He did. Yeah. He did. Um, okay. So just so I'm clear, did the design review committee review this proposed metal staircase? I wasn't at the. Uh, the, the design review committee review. We, when you. Because you were there when you were presenting it on the yes, lights. They did. Yeah. Yes, they did. Okay, no, okay. no, I was just because I, I, I wasn't there for oh, that part. There. No, Audra staffed that one. Audra that wasn't me. <laughs> they did. They did review it. Okay. And I, I just didn't see any particular. I mean, they don't usually do findings apart from checking off boxes on the criteria. But I wanted yeah. to make sure because that obviously has more of an aesthetic impact than it's going to have as a. Um, what we normally look at for design review purposes. I mean, um, well, the stair that we designed development. was going to um, kind of blend and comport with the existing um, architecture. I think there's some language in here about that. just link in to the walkway that's actually shown on the site plan. Right. So it wouldn't, it would, and since it's an open metal walkway, it's not going to change the coverage requirements or anything along those, point, those right. lines. Right. I just wanted to be clear what we're, what we're mm -hmm. reviewing and approving and approving. Mm -hmm. um, and so th there's not necessarily a plan to put in that stairway. You just would like the option as you go forward, or we if would I like understand, the, we would like the option because of the, the concept of the parking area on the camp and the idea that the tenant would need to access their apartment. We would like to make it easy for them to do that. And so we think that that would be one way to make it easy, mm -hmm. um, but we don't necessarily know if it's if it would be best uh, because there's other entrances into the building but it would come through the um, through the basement and, uh, yeah, yeah. I, well, I'm, I'm looking uh, yeah. I'm looking here and that's actually where I was going with my next question which is right now as, as if this driveway was built I'm looking at the one of the pictures that shows the back of the building and there's a it looks like there's a basement door yes that walks out because the, at ground level uh, but otherwise, there's no other access to the building from that side of the, the property. Is that correct? That's right. So if anyone, if the basement door wasn't their point of access, they'd have to go around on the sidewalk, which there's sidewalks that's, that's around this, and they'd walk to the front staircase, go to the front porch, and either go in the uh, one of the two doors, depending on where their apartment was. That's right. And the, the existing door is going to service the second floor apartment, and the new the new door is going to service the first floor apartment. Is that that's right? Mine? That's true. All right. And so the idea of building the staircase would simply to be a second entrance to the first floor, a sort of back door. A back door in a way of not having to go in through the cellar or the basement. Is is it possible to get into that back door? Um, if you walk around the property, go up the existing driveway and through that patio, is there access to that walkway or does it sit above? Is it? It's way above. It's yeah, but I can see in the you back, can, but I'm walk, wondering in the front. You can walk from the Kemp Avenue side around the building to the College Street College, side. If you, uh, and, and you could walk in, essentially uh, um, walk around the entire building to the other 
right. side of the building right. and get into your apartment if from, possible. From yeah. the back there. Okay. Yes, you could. I just sure. wanted to make sure I understood that. Yeah. So if you came up College Street up the driveway, you could go in that back door. Yeah. Okay. Right, but you'd have to walk through the, you'd have to walk through this landscaped area, right? Uh, to get to the back, you're, you're going to... Yeah, you would. Uh, yes. Right. Yes, you would. So you'd would. have to walk through this landscape shrub area to access the back mm -hmm. door with the wooden steps. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yes, what, what looks like a path on the August 7th yeah. drawing is a drip line. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that, that photograph yeah. clarifies it a bit more, that it's actually more of a rain garden, it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, so you either have to walk on the crushed gravel right next to the house or circle around on the college property. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So, so Meredith, if they were seeking approval for the stairway structure that has been reviewed by the design review committee, mm -hmm. would they have to could that be approved administratively, or would they have to come to the DRB to build that stair structure? But, but, but this is the. But this is part okay. of this application, so they can get approval for the whole, the whole thing, and then if they don't build the stair within the next two years, three years, if they get an extension, then they have to come back. Okay, I was under the impression that the application was for the driveway. Well, the the part, the reason it's here. Is is because of the driveway. Yes. But so if not for the driveway, this stair would be approved administratively. Yeah. Correct. If not for the driveway, the whole thing would be approved <laughs> administratively. Okay. There's nothing, you know, once we got the stormwater clarification from DPW, if they signed off on the stormwater and we're okay with the access point, we would have just okay. dealt with it. And then um, I don't think we need to necessarily uh, delve into the particular features of the door mm -hmm. that's being proposed. Um, Unless because, somebody has questions about it, DRC has approved it. Right. And unlike before, where we would sit in review of DRC decisions, we no longer have that direct review. All right. Uh, is there anyone in the audience to be heard on this application? If you'll step up the microphone and please state your name. My name is Jose Aguayo, I live at Juan Kemp, which is uh, directly across from the proposed uh, driveway. So our driveway, we share, we have a, a divided driveway, there's plants, but Dr. Kellogg, my neighbor, and I e exit and enter on that side of the street. We don't have a sidewalk on our side. The sidewalk is across the street. That's the sidewalk that everyone uses to get out of the neighborhood when the kids go to school or whatever, that's the side. Um, so my, uh, my w one comment that I wanted to make on this is that there uh, has been mentioned already that it, that side of the street is used uh, daily by actually staff of the college that park there and other people. And so if you're going to put a driveway in there uh, as a neighbor or somebody across the street, I prefer then if you're going to approve that then not to allow parking because you can't, you see people come up the hill from uh, there's there's a lot of cars that turn in and out of there, and a lot of people use the back because of the the steepness of College Street. Mm -hmm. There's actually a little more traffic than you might imagine because people come around the back with larger vehicles and things like that. So um, and the same if they're going down instead of dropping down, they turn there, and so there is. I mean, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't have a study, but I'm assuming okay. there's more traffic than you might imagine. And there are cyclists to turn there because they, they rather than drop down, they go around the neighborhood. So if you have cars there in the winter, it, it, it gets very, very narrow, actually. Uh, which also brings me to the last point that I want to make is, and I, Keith and I actually I discussed, I asked about the snow removal. Because the space is very narrow, the end of the driveway, the proposed driveway, is the new dorms for the college. So unless the snow is going to be removed and taken away, um, there's really no place to put the snow. Uh, did you see the most recent plan? So they've shortened the driveway part. So this is all snow storage. I have an extra I can give you. See, they've, the D Department of Public Works had that same concern, and so they made them shorten the driveway. Well, it's... It so the, the property drops down into the into the uh, 
the if you if you go there and see the site, you'll notice that uh, the proposed driveway actually drops in down to the basement of the dorms. Mm -hmm. So I mean, uh, unless they're going to do some major work on that, it's it's going to snow is going to be. Uh, <laughs> it's way. Um, the college actually has their air units and everything right there. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I think that that's not that's an issue for them to deal with. What I really am concerned about is to make sure that when it's done, it's it's safe for everyone. And uh, I know that I have problems sometimes just reversing or even getting out of the property because people park, you know, haphazardly. Sometimes in the winter, the snow, the ice builds up, so it gets even narrower there. So I mean, I I, I would rather see it with no parking. Uh, on that side of the street, at least heading towards the corner. That way there's enough width there for, for the, even the, the, the town's you know, vehicles and everybody else to turn and be able to see as you come around. You know. So I know my, my uh, neighbors have other concerns, you know, but I mean, I, I think the safety is above all and the fact that you know, there's, there's a little bit of traffic on uh, that turns there, so. Right, yeah. thank that, you. That's really it, thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, um, I'll just note uh, further, when, if you look at this photograph and at least the way the, the driveway is now set to end before the house, it looks like there may be a flat area, but certainly that's something that, that the college and Mr. Schumacher would have to work out if, if he was dumping snow that was causing greater water flow onto the college's property, um, which isn't necessarily under a purview. Um, uh, let me ask Meredith, um, when uh, DPW creates a new driveway, um, do they uh, put any type of, of uh, you know, no parking on either side of the driveway? I honestly have no idea. I mean, there's there's places that there's there's some distance, but I don't know right. what I mean, that is. Right. I mean, there's a requirement. Is. I think people stay a certain distance like a half away. Car like five feet or, or yeah. 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 We're but done. It, well, it's not enforced if it is. No, it's oh, not. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> not I mean, here. I mean, you know, like you're talking downtown. thinking of the yellow curbing. Or the I'm thinking of yellow curbing yellow or even just curb. like to the extent that there are uh, parking spaces. I know on, on where they're delineated, they will often have, you know, they'll end short of the driveway, creating enough space between the driveway and the last parked car to allow for people to come out in and out safely. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think that's more in commercial applications where they they yellow right um, paint the curb to to keep people you know intersections or major commercial things. But I don't see it on yeah no I don't I don't see the yellow see it a lot either. on Barry Street. Is it? Yeah. One last point. Oh sure. It was mentioned. Actually, you mentioned that. In fact, uh, this idea of reversing in. I can see because people already do this, come in there and go into my driveway. I really would prefer not because it's going to encourage people to go into my driveway because that's the only way. If people are going to be parked in front, they're going to have to turn into my driveway to reverse in there. Right. And I know the doctor and myself do not want that, and we'd have a, we'd have a problem. Right. I, I see that as a non-starter for that exact reason, and because uh, I think that's true. You know, you, you, that's intrusive onto you, your property, um, and then setting it up for that kind of situation. So, you know, that's a good way to start a fight between the neighbors and the city. Um, okay. Any other questions or concerns from the board? So, you know, to a certain extent, I think the, the issue of parking on the street um, ultimately becomes a city council issue. Um, and becomes a city, you know, the Department of Public Works. I know they make recommendations as based on safety, traffic counts, you know, uh, as, as Did we miss something else? I, he, he, he's I just. Might be a, if you look at uh, page six, number 14, large C, little I. Mm -hmm. Four camp Ave as needed. That must be one or three, right? I don't think that's actually four. Camp. Is just I, 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 yeah, I may have I no, may have put in the wrong. Four. There's no four. I just camp. mean okay. I just mean the Kemp Avenue adjacent to this. 
property that we're talking about. I may have put in the wrong street number. Oh, okay. So we're looking at the staff report where it says melting snow is a major stormwater source of concern for DPW, which we've talked about. Uh, and yeah, then the proposed site plan indicates a swale between the new driveway parking area and the adjacent Fort Kemp Ave, which would essentially be the neighboring property as as needed. But that's that's really for prevent water Six. runoff. Yeah, that's all yeah. I'm saying. It's not, it's not really cool. It's, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, so we don't plan to do that. So you're not planning to do no, the swale no anymore swale. at all? So the, and this is, no. you've worked some uh, alternatives for the stormwater out with Department of Public Works? Yes. Okay. That was that was the last thing that if but we had DPW said. DPW would like uh, a, we'll have a shallow slope. The, the driveway in order to meet the street is going to be down approximately two feet. Mm -hmm. So then we'll do a slight grade up to the back lawn and a depression there for snow storage and infiltration, which is their preference. Um, they were not concerned about the fact that the driveway will grade toward Kemp and the runoff off the driveway itself will come down the uh, north side of Kemp to a catch basin that's about 70 feet down the road. Okay. Thank you, Don. That's, that's helpful. Not So we're... You're not asking for, nor are we granting a, a proposed swale as part of this Correct. driveway construction. Um, okay, so I think that is all. What's the pleasure of the board? A question of a board member. Um, we understand that there's going to be the curb cut and access permit and DPW will revisit the sight lines. Would that be the appropriate place to consider the distance between the last parked car and the opening to the driveway? Because I don't feel like I have enough engineering technical knowledge to say, well, you should paint the curb eight feet of yellow in order to address the concern. Um, yeah, nor do we have the authority not, to do we, we, so. We don't have, well, no authority either, either so never. <laughs> but I do wonder, in. In, in the interest of addressing um, the neighbor's concern, um, is, is that going to be looked at again? I, what, what, I, I what don't. I don't know the that? DPW ordinance. I can't answer that question. Okay. I, I haven't. Ha I haven't been here long enough to, to know the zoning regulations, this current zoning regulations, the 2011 zoning regulations, and the DPW I ordinance. Just can't <laughs> I can't believe. It. Um, I, I've learned so, as much as I can as quick as I can. <laughs> so <laughs> as far as far as directing a, a next step, it, would, would a do do. Is, does DPW accept comments on those types of permits, and would that be an avenue for um, any neighbors to to make the same suggestion as they've made here? Just to be heard is what right. I'm trying to figure out. How do we get this into the conversation? So my understanding is, is this is that, yes, um, they would take comments. They would take feedback. And, you know, the DPW is driven by you know the B-71 standards, the normal engineering you know, the requirements, they would look at the traffic count on the road. Um, ultimately, however, any decision to restrict parking is a city council issue that they would have to vote on, but they would get recommendations from the Department of Public yeah. Works for such a decision. And, and the, the only example I can think of off the top of my head that why I think this, as opposed to knowing it, is if you go up East State Street, um, about halfway in front of the blue building next to the Vita building, they have a no parking. And I'm not quite sure why that is, but I do remember city council voting on that decision to make it a no parking area. And I can't remember if it was for safety or for some other reason. Um, but I think that's ultimately where this would have to go. You know, we couldn't change the parking even if we decided to um, and nor are we charged with necessarily you know reviewing the parking situation apart from you know any sort of larger sort of nebulous question um, that we're faced with I guess I'm trying to make a distinction between parking zones and what should and shouldn't be parking zones in the city and zoning and safe safety or public works standards that may impinge onto a little bit of curb. I feel like there's a gray area there that may or may not actually re require city council approval. 
But in any event, I think my, my question is answered in terms of how, how that remark would be shared in the permitting process would be to speak with DPW. Um, so well, and, and I guess that's all we can do. On an informal level, too, I think Meredith has heard the concerns not only of, of the witnesses and applicants, um, but the board's concerns about this and would communicate that with DPW, given that her yeah. office is directly across the hall from them. So while it's not a formal recommendation, it certainly does carry. In fact, it may be more effective than a formal recommendation because <laughs> it's hard to say no to somebody face to face. Um, I mean, so I will note too, just in point. looking at the picture that's on the front of the staff report, it appears there's a sign, which is typical um, for no parking between that sign in the corner mm -hmm. and just judging the distance between kind of approximating between the proposed driveway and that sign you know at most there's space for one car kind of uh, up Kemp towards uh, college from the proposed driveway maybe maybe practically there's not space for one car to legally park there anyway um, for what that's worth not that it's worth anything given that we're don't have any control over this to begin with. But an observation. An observation. Any other observations? We're full of them. Okay. Uh, what's the board's pleasure? Do we want to take this under advisement into deliberative session, or do we wish to um, make a motion and decide it here and now? I will just simply say we can easily move this into deliberative session since we're already going into one. Um, but I also don't think that this is a very difficult application either. So I will entertain a motion. And as chair, I can't make it. So that's a Robert rules of order limitation. Mr. Chair, I would move approval of the request to install a second driveway at 29 College Street that's less than the generally allowed distance from nearby driveways as presented in the application. Dated 71119 and supporting materials. Uh, with the amendment to the stormwater plans, friendly amendment. Yes. And the amendment to the stormwater plans is not requiring a swale? That Correct. That okay, well, that was listed on the plan as needed anyway, so it was not a requirement on the plan. Oh, good point. They're Thank way, you. They're way ahead of us. That's all right. <laughs> that is all right. Sorry, Kate. That's okay. And I think um, we have a consider. Uh, a, a con I'll stop there. That's the motion. Okay. Uh, okay. So we take. Um, I still need the cut sheets for the lights. Oh, it was said it was for the board's consideration. I didn't know it was a requirement. Um, okay. I, it's, I, it's with options. the conditions that the applicant will please provide the zoning administrator with cut sheets for new external lights as recommended by the design review committee prior to permit issuance. Yes. If they've Thank been you. able to bring them by today, then we wouldn't have had to. Have okay. It. We have a motion by Kate. Do we have a second? A second with the uh, just a question before. Formalize that, but with the communication with DPW regarding the parking issues, uh, we don't have anything in the ordinance that specifically uh, guides us in that area. But do we want to say something to the effect uh, that uh, communicating uh, with DPW on that on the parking issue? I don't know. Is that would be a condition? I mean, we can state that this we can state in the written decision that this was discussed. So it would be on the record that it was discussed, but I don't think it would be a condition. That could be that could be adequate from my perspective. And yes, yes, okay. So that's my that's my uh, uh, second. Okay. Any discussion? The only question I have, Meredith, is do we need to enlarge the approval for the uh, oh, design? Oh yes, review? you do. For the design Sorry. review elements uh, as well, well as the back staircase. Um. No, because that's the the. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Shall I modify the motion? So it's it's well to yeah and modify with the design review elements. Right. Sure. So I'll give that a try. Um, in addition to granting the request for decreased access spacing, the motion is to also approve the design review committee's recommendation for the door design at the front of the building, the facing. College Street and also to approve the proposed staircase design as an option uh, between 31 and 29 College Streets as presented in the application. 
and the lighting as approved by the design review committee subject to provision of cut, cut sheets to Marion. Okay, so amended motion by Kate. We accept that amended motion. Accepted. Kevin, is your second? Yes. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. All right, we have approval. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that is uh, the last application of the evening. The other business, electing a chair. Why do we need to elect a chair? Because you're supposed to do this on <laughs> once a, a year. annual business. Annual. annual. This is once a year in August. You're supposed to do this. Oh. So somebody right. needs to make a motion to nominate. I, 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 I would will like to make the um, motion to nominate Dan. Should you be willing to accept uh, that responsibility for another year? Uh, that would be my motion. I would second that motion. All those in any further discussion. <laughs> Observations. <laughs> All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Simply recuse myself. Uh, and I think we need to uh, we need to nominate a vice chair. Uh, is that what we did, or is it that the vice chair is? I think it is elected, right? Yeah. Okay. I think it's same the same it's not, schedule. It's not staggered. No. I mean, it would be an annual thing where you yep. did the chair and vice yeah. chair. We, Sorry, I think we just put chair it, We did it together in last August. year. Okay. Yep. I'm still willing to accept. I'd like to nominate. Thank you. I, I accept. Would, I would second that. Okay. Motion by Rob, second by Kevin. Any further discussions? Hearing none, all those in favor of Kate as vice chair? Very good. Uh, the only other item of public business remaining is to announce our next meeting, which is Tuesday, September 3rd, 2019. That would be the day after Labor Day. Uh, so mark your calendars accordingly. I will, I will School will be back in session. That I will be away that week. So if we have any alternates. Um, well, that, uh, we're, this is, this is this it. it. Do, so. do we have an update as to how the uh, process of getting new board members well, is going? Well, so Michael is now a full member and has taken the empty full seat. So we have two alternate vacancies. At the, oh no, one alternate vacancy, one full, that's right, you're, you're an alternate still. So we have one full time and one alternate. Yeah, that needs open, to be. and as far as I know, we have no applications for either. No okay. Let's we'll spread the word. So Please spread the word. beat the bushes. Anyone out there in TV land who wishes to join the fun in person? That's right, this is an opportunity. And <laughs> yeah. uh, I would highly encourage our TV audience to uh, to look into this as Come a on rewarding now. opportunity. Yeah. You may get to discuss shrubberies. <laughs> <laughs> shrubberies is a particularly uh, uh, important part of this job. Uh, so, yes. Um, so, welcome, Michael, full time. I don't think we've acknowledged that yet. Welcome to the, the full board. That. Not that you are a lesser <laughs> member before. But. First act, I'll probably also miss September 3rd. Yeah. So. Okay. okay. That's good to know. Um, given that we are down, that would be a, a two, three, five. four, five. Okay. Well, we so, still have quorum. So the next meeting is on the 3rd, right? Yep. Okay. Tuesday the 3rd. All right. Um, but given that we are five, if anyone else is thinking that they might not be able to make it, just notify us as soon as possible um, so we can make adjustments accordingly. All right, with that, uh, I believe we've already had a motion to move into deliberative session following this and we'll go off the record. Do we want to make, yes, we'll do that and then we'll adjourn after the deliberative session. No, I think we adjourn before. We, we close the, we have we to close the, the public meeting. Okay, sorry. I'll make a motion to adjourn the public meeting and move into deliberative session on uh, the uh, 11, 11, Baldwin. Baldwin. 11 Baldwin application. Motion by Ryan. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Kevin. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. I abstain. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are adjourned.